Hey everyone, welcome back to the Nintendo Prime, and we've got news for you! But first, I gotta tell you about a giveaway we have going on. You know, we're giving away a $300 item back here on the wall. You see this though? See this? That's mine! Not yours, mine! This is yours though. See, this is, this is the package right here. See, it's already ready to go. Fragile. So fragile. Don't worry, it survived. Yes, you can go down to the pinned comment or description to enter. Every day we have a new code in our videos so that you get 20 extra entries. Oh, but wait a second, I'm not done with giveaways because if you're a new subscriber this month, and only this month, one of our new subscribers in the month of August is gonna get a $20 eShop gift card. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button and let's get into today's news. So we all know that tomorrow there's gonna to be a Splatoon 3 Direct, but you know what's really, really funny about that? Nintendo almost leaked the Direct today. They were minutes away from leaking it, in fact, because a bunch of Nintendo places accidentally set the wrong day for their YouTube premiere because this is a pre-recorded show. So the UK, Australia, and Belgium all had their live stream set for today and it got to the point that the 10 minute countdown timer was going and it was live. All of these streams got shut down at around three minutes and 34 seconds left on the timer. But if Nintendo hadn't gotten to one of those streams in that time frame, the Splatoon Direct would have actually started and information would have leaked out directly from Nintendo. Talk about a big oopsie. Several places clicking on the wrong spot on the back end, selecting the wrong date. This can happen. It happens when I'm scheduling streams as well. But you would figure there would be checks and double checks and triple checks for a Direct. But hey, they did catch it. The streams will come back up tomorrow. Kind of funny, but uh, what are you going to do? At least they caught it, but it's really cool to, I guess, see that even Nintendo sometimes can make flubs like this. Our next story is about a major game that's a third-party multi-platform game coming to Switch being delayed. And we're talking about Marvel's Midnight Suns. But this delay comes with new news for the Nintendo Switch version that's extremely unfortunate. So you know what? Let's get to their exact words. We have an important update to share regarding our launch date for Marvel's Midnight Suns. After discussion with the team, we've made the decision to move back the launch timing of Marvel's Midnight Suns to ensure we are delivering the best possible experience for our fans. We will launch later this fiscal year on Windows PC, Xbox Series X slash S, and PlayStation 5, with the Xbox One, PlayStation 4, and Nintendo Switch versions following at a later date. We know fans are looking forward to playing Marvel's Midnight Suns, and we will use this extra time to make sure we are delivering the best possible experience for everyone. Marvel's Midnight Suns is easily the biggest game we've ever made, and we're incredibly appreciative of all the support players have shared with us throughout the years. Thank you, and this comes from Marvel's Midnight Suns team. And in case you guys remember, Marvel's Midnight Suns is being made by Fire Access, and this would be the largest game Fire Access themselves have ever made. Not the largest that their publisher, 2K, you know, Take Two has made, but the largest that Fire Access themselves has made. This is unfortunate news because it's not just the Switch version, it's Xbox One and PlayStation 4 as well being delayed to a, a later date. So while, yes, it looks like at some point by the end of December, Marvel Midnight Suns will be coming out on next gen, it's the older hardware consoles that are seeing a massive delay uh, into 2023. And it's, it's just unfortunate. Granted, Switch isn't being treated differently this time than Xbox One and PlayStation 4, but Switch is still a current platform. Xbox One and PlayStation 4 are not current platforms. They are officially platforms that have been replaced. Switch hasn't, so seeing Switch bundled in with them is unfortunate. And it is also something that us Switch owners have become very accustomed to. So many multi-platform third-party games will come out on other systems first, Switch later. It's just, even when they're announced at the same time, like Gollum was announced, and now, hey, look, the version for Switch version of Gollum is gonna be coming at a later time. Wouldn't be surprised if this also happens with the Harry Potter game. It's just, I, I, I hate that there seems to be a de-emphasis on the Switch version. You know, the system with 111 million install base seems kind of important to me that you might want to prioritize that a little bit. You could see when LEGO Star Wars Skywalker Saga prioritized the Switch version, it ended up selling extremely well on Switch. So maybe, you know, treating the audience with a bit more respect with your release would be a better choice here. But hey, I just think Fire Access and the studios that make these decisions just don't think the sales on Switch justify 
delaying everything or focusing on the Switch version. So the best made games for Switch are the ones that are given the proper attention. Uh, if you want to actually give some credit, remember Mortal Kombat 11? Day and date on Switch, ran great on Switch, sold well because of it. So yeah, you know, there are plenty of examples out there of companies in my opinion, doing it right versus companies that are like, hey, let's just delay this for the platform that's most popular just because we don't think it's going to sell that well on that platform. If that's the case, just don't bring it over. I don't know. That's just my thoughts. Some people are going to disagree with that. So an interesting bug. Is it a bug? Is it a glitch? I'm not really sure. Came up with Nintendo Switch's UI from a Go Nintendo user named David. Now, have you ever wondered if there's actually an upper limit to how many games you can have on your Nintendo Switch? I mean, we generally think the upper limit is how big of a micro SD card do you have? Do you have a one terabyte micro SD card and you know you just fill it all the way up, right? That's the upper limit then. But the thing is, what if I were to tell you that just like there's a limit to how many friends you can put on your friends list, there's actually a limit to how many games the Nintendo Switch UI can actually display. David actually ran into this problem where he now owns over 2,000 games for Nintendo Switch. And whether those games are physical or digital is sort of irrelevant because we're actually talking about the icons for those games. Once you put that 2001 game, 2002, 2003, so once you get above 2,000, icons start randomly disappearing from your UI. It could be physical icons, it could be digital icons, it could be recently played games, or it could be games you haven't touched in years. There doesn't seem to be a rhyme or reason to how the Switch picks out what icons to remove. And this obviously led David to wonder, are they just deleting data? That's really weird. So he obviously goes and he checks his data. And no, all the data, save data, and install data is there. So the game is still there on Switch. It's just not displaying in the UI. And the fix to this is, well, you know, go archive some games, right? You archive games, you get below 2,000, and then those icons that vanished come back. So yeah, it is an interesting bug and a weird limitation in the Switch's UI. I also think at the time that they were making the UI, Nintendo didn't, couldn't even imagine somebody adding 2,000 plus games to their Switch without archiving, because obviously archiving is how you create space. Really, really interesting that this is a supposed bug I mean, is it a bug? I, I, I guess we call it a bug, right? A glitch, it's something. Uh, now that this has happened and might start happening to more users moving forward that happen to own that many games, and I know for a lot of you it's hard to imagine, 2,000 games? I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of indie games in there. You know, I, I wonder if Nintendo will eventually release a patch that will address this because it doesn't seem to matter if you organize them in folders. Like, hey, they have folders, so just put your games in folders. So maybe they disappear from the overall list, but they'll still appear in the folders. No, they just they, they just vanish from the system entirely. So, yeah, Nintendo it will probably patch this, or maybe they won't because it's such an isolated incident. It's such a rarity. Very few people will ever see this bug, so they might not prioritize it. But I, I, I have to imagine it's probably just a few lines of code in the UI that need to be altered. Like there probably is an overall 2,000, you know, icon limiter in place that they could just, you know, increase to 9,000 or something crazy. Because the person, hey, the person, even with all those icons, the Switch doesn't slow down or anything. So it's not a matter of the Switch handling it. For those who don't know, the Switch also deloads icons as you're scrolling when you have you know, hundreds and hundreds of games. It'll deload icons you, that aren't on your screen. So that's why it doesn't really matter how many icons you have. So yeah, I think Nintendo will probably patch this. So today there was a little bit of a Monster Hunter event for Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak, that DLC that came out, and it talked about a free update. So they gave us some new footage, and I'm going to get into all the little details here. So enjoy watching the trailer. And in there we see there's going to be a free title update 1, version 11. Weekly event quests are going to be starting on August 18th. A complete event quest to gain exclusive rewards. There's going to be additional paid DLC, new afflicted monsters, a new system called Anomaly Investigations, which includes increases the quest level to take on more powerful monsters. Quest details are determined at random, and there's a new upgrade system too. Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak version 11 free update title 1 releases on August 10th, so tomorrow. Four new monsters, Lucent, Nargukuga, Seething, Basilgeese, Silver, Rathalos, and Gold, Raytheon. Quests unlock after you reach Master Rank 10. The armor you can forge from the materials of the monsters is added in version 11. All come with new skills. There's anomaly quest detailed, and version 11 expands anomaly research 
search quest, four new elements are added, and anomaly investigations are detailed. And then they give an overview here where the added story elements to the game are going to be new monsters, new afflicted monsters, new quests, new quest system, uh, new locale forlorn arena, new weapon trees, armor and layer and armor, new skills, a new facility called the Anomaly Research Lab, and you can now enhance your gear via the Corius Crafting at the Smithy. They added new system elements, including new guild card pages, awards, and titles. You can now display a badge of heroes next to your hunter's name. They added new Hunter Connect invite settings and other miscellaneous bug fixes. And then for the paid DLC, you get face paint slash makeup, Malazano Menace, and single stroke cheek. You get a new hairstyles called Spira Bird Edge and Fiorain Short. You get a new hunter voice in Fiorain and Gallius. You get a new sticker set called the Special Stickers 10, and you get new BGM called Monster and Title Music Piano Version and Monster Hunter Series Bases Part 2. So this is obviously a lot of content being added, and they're gonna continue to add content as the DLC continues to roll out. I obviously find this to be really, really cool, and I'm glad to see such an amazing game on Switch and PC getting these kind of updates moving forward. I love seeing continued updates for games, both in terms of free content, and then if you bought the DLC, you know, the DLC additions as well. This is really good stuff, and kudos on Capcom, I think, for actually showing the right way to do DLC. So our last story for today is more of a thank you, Mike Odyssey. <laughs> Thanks to Mike Odyssey, one of the uh, co-hosts of the Nintendo Prime Podcast. He actually put out a video today as well talking about various pieces of news, different news than I talked about, so you should go check it out. And in that video, he talks about Nintendo Directs. And it's not because there's a new rumor, a new leak, a new anything, but because there seems to be this narrative coming up that, you know what, with what Nintendo's doing with the Splatoon 3 Direct, with the Xenoblade Direct, with the Partner Showcase, with the Splatoon 3 OLED drop, with the way they announced Kirby Dream Buffet, with the way they dropped the release date of October 28th for Bayonetta 3, like all of this stuff happening that Nintendo just no longer needs Directs and no longer will do Directs. And he brought up a very interesting point, and it's one that I think it's overlooked by many, and that is really simple. We just don't have all this information that would have been in a direct in a direct because there was no E3. And I know what you're saying, Nintendo shouldn't care about E3. Except when there was no E3 at all in 2020, Nintendo did the same thing. When there was no E3 this year in any form, Nintendo did the same thing. When there was an E3 last year, as crappy as that E3 was, Nintendo showed up and did a direct. So it is more likely than not that there probably will be a brand new general Nintendo Direct, if not in September, at least before the end of this year, and probably one early next year around February or March as well. And you might go, well, what's your proof for this? It's just history. That's really it. Just looking at the history of Nintendo. Now, some people thought because the Splatoon 3 Direct is happening, oh my gosh, we can't have a general Direct in September. Splatoon 3 was never gonna be part of a general Direct in September. Directs usually happen in the middle of the month, and Splatoon 3 comes out September 9th. So the only reason that they would even mention Splatoon 3 in this Direct would be because they're gonna be talking about future content coming to the game. Not because they need to talk about the game before launch. There was always gonna be a dedicated uh, event for Splatoon 3 like there was for Xenoblade, like there will be for Breath of the Wild 2 as well. Nintendo does dedicated Directs for their biggest games. They've been doing this consistently for a decade. So. I don't know why people think that's a precursor to not doing a general direct because you know what they still need to talk about? They still need to talk about Advance Wars, Lumbus 2 Reboot Camp, Breath of the Wild 2, Metroid Prime, maybe even a remaster or something else coming this holiday. Oh, and you know, by the way, they also need to talk about 2023 games. Nintendo always uses the September Direct to not only re-advertise what's still coming the rest of the year, they also use it to actually let you know, hey, you know what? We still have stuff happening next year, so buy a Switch this holiday and be excited for what's to come. That's what the September Direct is all about. It's always been about enticing you to buy now because look at the amazing things you can play at the moment, but also what you're gonna be able to play next year. So unless they have nothing coming next year, which we already know they have Breath of the Wild 2 at minimum, likely Advanced Wars 1 plus 2 Reboot Camp as well, but definitely uh, Breath of the Wild 2, they're gonna keep wanting to sell you that you should buy a Switch now confidently. So yeah, September Direct probably going to happen. You know, you can give Mike Odyssey credit for it if it does, because he's saying it definitely will happen. I'm just saying that it probably will. Um, and you know what, if there's an E3 next year, like they're promising, you know, read Pop Run in the show, then Nintendo will probably be there and there'll probably be a June Direct next year. 
That I'll say confidently because Nintendo has yet to show that they won't support the ESA and support E3 because every time there's been one, they're there. They're the only company that has been wildly consistent about the things they say about the ESA and E3 and that is, if there is one, we'll be there. If there's not, we're going to do something different. So, anyways folks, thank you so much for tuning in. I am Nintendo RoboJets from Nintendo Prime and you know what? I'm going to catch all of you in the next video.